Today's episode is for two different kind of people. If you're a gardener or interested in gardening or organic gardening specifically, you're going to love this episode. Um, also, if you love microbes and nutrients and fungi and plants, you're going to love this episode as well. So our guest today is Jeff Lowenfels. Um, He is a 72-year-old retired lawyer, but he has the longest running gardening column in North America. Um, he's been running that in the Anchorage Daily News since November 1976. He's the author of several best-selling books on, on organic gardening. If you look them up on Amazon, they have really high reviews and lots of reviews. Um, and one on growing cannabis as well. Um Teaming with Microbes, the Organic Gardener's Guide to the Soil uh, soil Food Web, Teaming with Nutrients, the Organic Gardener's Guide to Optimizing Plant Nutrition, and Teaming with Fungi, the Organic Grower's Guide to Mycorrhizae, I think I'm saying that right, <laughs> are the books that he already has. And now he has a new one coming out called, or just came out, sorry, called Teaming with Bacteria, The Organic Gardener's Guide to Endophytic Bacteria and the Rhizophagy Cycle. So that's what he's going to be talking about today. And of course, I had to pick his brain about the cannabis book he wrote as well. Um, wow. If you like plants, if you like science, if you like organic food, if you like understanding how our food works and the magic that happens under the ground and in our plants, you're going to love this episode. Here is Jeff Lowenfels. All right, Jeff, I was just telling you before we started, I am a super nerd about nature and soil and nutrients and fungi and bacteria and like love all of this. I'm so excited um, to talk about, I mean, your newest book is the Teaming with Bacteria book, correct? Right. And correct. you already have Teaming with Microbes, Teaming with Nutrients, Teaming with Fungi. You are my kind of human. I cannot wait to pick your brain. <laughs> so let's, let's start with the latest, Teaming with Bacteria. Sure. What do people need to know about this? Well, uh, first of all, they need to know it's spelled T-E-A-M. Um, what I do is I write about the soil food web. Uh, and the soil food web is the science behind organic gardening. So they're really, well, let me, let me start by saying that in 2006, when Teeming with Microbes came out, this is how the soil food web worked. The plant uses about 30 to 40 50% of its photosynthetic energy to produce things that drip out of the roots that are designed to attract bacteria and fungi. They contain a lot of carbon. The bacteria and fungi can't produce their own carbon. They don't photosynthesize these particular ones. And so the plant provides the carbon in the form of these exudates, which attracts the bacteria and fungi to the root system. And they eat and they're happy and everybody's doing well. And along come protozoa and nematodes, and they eat the bacteria and the fungi. So protozoa you studied in high school. You don't remember a thing about them other than paramecium and amoeba. Those are, mm -hmm. those are protozoa. Nematodes mm -hmm. you probably did not study in high school. They're uh, microscopic worms. And so they, the microscopic worms and the protozoa come along and they discover the bacteria and fungi and they eat them. And they eat them because they also need carbon, which the bacteria and fungi contain, but the bacteria and fungi contain a lot of other stuff that the, that the uh, protozoa and nematodes don't really need. And so they eliminate the excess into the soil by the root system. And this excess contains plant nutrients in usable form. They have a charge on them which in my second book, Teeming with Nutrients, you'll, you can figure out why that's important, but they put a charge on them and the stuff sits in the soil and moves into the plant. That was the soil food web until 2010 when a group in Australia discovered something and named it rhizophagy. Some of the bacteria that are attracted by those exudates don't just sit in the soil they move up against the plant root and they move into what's known as the meristem root cells, the brand new cells in the root system. And they move in. And when they move in, the plant sprays them with a superoxide that strips their cell wall and the plant absorbs that as nutrients. And then uh, the, uh, in order to protect itself, the bacteria 
creates a nitrate. It fixes nitrogen inside the plant and that turns to nitrate, nitrite to nitrate and feeds the plant. So these bacteria are providing nutrients inside the plant root to the plant, but they multiply every 20 minutes and they produce other things other than the nitrate. In particular, they produce ethylene. So they circulate around the plant root cell and they produce ethylene, which causes the cell to stretch a little bit, but they're multiplying, they're producing nitrogen, the plant is, is using the nitrogen. And after a couple of days, there are so many of these bacteria in that plant cell that the, the uh, ethylene, which is normally circulated as they're moving around inside the cell, becomes concentrated up against the cell wall. A root hair starts to grow. We thought root hairs were designed to attract nutrients, but mm -hmm. in fact, they're so that the bacteria can move into the root hair. They are then blown out into the soil wow. where they regrow their cell wall. And two or three days later, they go back wow. in again and repeat the trip. Wow. Really new stuff. And it's called wow. rhizophagy. Rhizophagy. Mm. And it's a new branch of the soil food web. So the complete picture now is what we described in 2006 in teeming with microbes. But now we add teeming with bacteria and that Very adds cool. another component to it. Now, I didn't invent any of these things. The 2006 <laughs> sixth version is a woman named Dr. Elaine Ingham. And the 2010 version has been developed uh, by this Australia crew. They lost their funding. And a gentleman named Dr. James White at Rutgers University picked up the research and now continues this research. And mm -hmm. it is simply phenomenal. We're discovering all, or they're discovering, and I'm reporting on all sorts of things that are new to the soil food web to help our plants grow. So up to up to 30 to 40% of the nitrogen in the plant can come from this rhizophagy cycle. And uh, the rest of it comes from the soil uh, where the bacteria and fungi are being eaten by the protozoan and the nematodes. Now, a couple of things happen when those bacteria move into the plant. The plant sprays it with this superoxide to remove the bacterial cell wall but it has to be careful not to remove its own cell wall. So it has to develop systemic resistance as a result of its own activities. And so the plant becomes stronger as a result of these bacteria moving in. And mm -hmm. then there's a second kind of bacteria that move in through cracks that, that form when roots begin to branch and, and they move in through the stomata in the leaves and they move in, they get into the plant and the same thing happens. They get sprayed a little bit. The plant gets a little bit of resistance. Uh, and they're in there living and multiplying and breeding, producing metabolites that help the plant grow. Uh, mm. Why would a bacteria want to be inside a plant? Because there's no competition from the other bacteria. And so mm. they're in there doing their thing, making the plant stronger, producing phytohormones. Uh, gibberellic acid, auxins, all sorts of things that make the plant stronger and grow better, able to resist temperature, able to resist wind, uh, you know, all sorts of neat things happen as a result of these bacteria, and we never knew it. Now wow. we do. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. And, and, and we will for sure link up teaming with bacteria in the show notes and your all other books. I have to oh, ask sure. you about teaming with fungi because I'm a yeah. mushroom lover. I am a mycology nerd. Sure. My in my right. heart of hearts, if I had my way, I'd probably be just one of those people just like foraging for mushrooms all day. <laughs> I think it right. is the coolest. I love fungi. So can you talk about, you know, the relationship between plants and fungi? You know, what that's right. mostly what that right. book is about. Sure. So I've described the relationship between plants and the bacteria that move into the plant, but there are also very special fungi that mm -hmm. form a partnership with the plant roots. And in return for those wonderful exudates, they bring the plant nitrogen, phosphorus, water, and a lot of different metals. Mm -hmm. And so this is all great stuff. It's sort of the analog of teeming with bacteria, teeming with fungi. Now, mm -hmm. these fungi feed the plant. They stay with the plant as the plant grows. They produce spores 
and uh, increase in the soil. Uh, and so they're really, really beneficial to how plants grow. But they also work with the bacteria to form soil structure. So the bacteria produces slime that causes individual particles to stick together. And then the slime uh, stuck together particles are then woven by the fungi into bigger aggregates. And so fungi and the bacteria are where soil structure comes from. And, and these, th these aggregates uh, and individual molecules are not flat bricks. So when they get conglomerated together, you get air spaces, water spaces, places mm. for the little guys to hide from the big mm. guys. And mm. so this soil structure is really key. And then there's yeah. other kinds of fungi that are in the soil. One in particular, uh, they're actually mycorrhizal as well, that produces a substance called glomalin. Glomalin has tremendous amounts of carbon in it. And mm. what these fungi do is they bring the carbon from the air down into the wow. soil and tie so it big. up and see in the soil. Yeah, this is all such so important. So important. Stuff. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know the oceans are doing more than their fair share because of the lack right. of our carbon sequestration sequestration in our soil because of and that actually leads me to my next question. I'm just curious what your thoughts yeah. are on modern farming practices. <laughs> yeah, well, uh the latest uh, farming practices, the regenerative agriculture. Uh, is is all good stuff. And what, yes. what they really are doing is simply using the soil food web. It could be called yeah. soil right. food web agriculture. Yeah, um, yeah. they're just honoring yeah. it. Yeah. Right, right. And and uh, it's really important, but, but most people are not practicing regenerative mm -hmm. agriculture. They're using uh, big, big machinery. They're, they're breaking up the soil. They're putting in chemicals instead of the natural stuff. And mm -hmm. so as a result, we're losing soil structure. Soil is blowing away, yeah. and we're told we have 60, well, maybe 59 years yeah. of, of soil uh, left. That's not a very good thing. So we really need to be using the mm -hmm. soil food web to rebuild our soil system and to make sure that we continue to have soil for the rest of time. And, and that's why it's so important. Yeah. And like kind of what you were describing in the beginning, this process that happens in terms of the bioavailability of nutrients for the plants from right. this beautiful natural structure, we're losing that. And we know that right. we know that nutrient density in plants is dropping dramatically. And I think right. everything you just described there, and I'm sure in much more detail in your books, yeah. is that that's why it's not able to work in a har harmonic system because of these right. huge macro mineral and things that they, you know they're it's just it's not as good as nature so yeah, i appreciate yes, you right. sharing yeah they're ruining the, the science behind that right they ruin the system by using uh for example by putting nitrogen chemical nitrogen down on the soil so the plant says to itself gosh i'm spending 40 50 percent of my uh, energy my photosynthetic energy to produce these exudates to attract food and here comes somebody giving me food for free i don't need to do that I don't need to partner with the mycorrhizal fungi or the bacteria. And so those systems mm. shut down or slow down. And as a result, you don't get the same plant that you would get yeah. if it was growing naturally. And it's really that simple. If we let the natural system take its course, the plant's going to be healthy. It's going to produce the right vitamins and nutrients mm -hmm. in it. It's going to have the right kind of nitrogen in it. All that good stuff's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But when we come along and change that system, mm -hmm. then the plant reacts in a way that you and I would react. Someone mm -hmm. gives you free food, free money. You don't work anymore. You don't need to. Yeah. Free health care. Uh, you know, and so so we really, we've really messed the system up in an incredible way. The example I use are the redwoods. Who mm -hmm ever fertilizes the redwoods they're 500 years old 750 <laughs> feet tall they don't have any miracle grow no pesticides no herbicides yeah. and they yeah. do just fine and the reason yeah. they do fine is because what falls down from the redwoods hits the soil gets decayed by microbes that are in the soil and then ends up back in the plant again as gardeners and farmers we break that system that's known as the law of return and we come along and take the apple, we take the spinach leaf, 
uh, you know, we harvest the celery. Well, there's nothing left to go back into the soil to replenish it to feed the plant for next year. And so right. we need to come in and feed those microbes in the fall so that with mulches so that there's food uh, in, in the springtime in the soil uh, for the plant to be able to thrive. Sometimes don't you think we're funny as humans? You know, I think of this in terms of the body. The body is much like the soil and the planet. That's all part of nature. And it, it's just funny how, I mean, we don't know how to make a body it completely and just out of thin air, like just organize atoms to make a body. We don't know how to make a plant in this whole system work like out of thin air. We can't just create it. And, but yet we come in and we meddle with it like crazy. And right, we, there's right. so much we don't understand, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, and most of us, you know, most of us learn to garden from our parents and our grandparents. Mm -hmm. And we do things they did. Well, they didn't have the microscopes that Dr. Elaine Ingham had to be able to discover how the soil yeah. food web works. <laughs> And, and even she didn't have the kind of microscopes that Dr. James White at Rutgers University has to be able to see these bacteria. It took a special kind of microscopy. Yeah. It's been going on forever. We just didn't know it was happening. Gardeners, yeah. you know, we tend to mess things up. We tend to think that if you're not out there sweating, uh, you know, working hard, you don't, <laughs> you're not going to have a good garden. But in fact, it's the plant and the microbes working together mm -hmm. that should do it, the bulk of the work. We don't mm -hmm. rototill because when you rototill, you destroy the fungal right. network. When you cut a worm in half, you don't get two live worms. When you uh, move the bacteria or, uh, up to the surface that's supposed to be down at the root zone, you end up with problems. And so we don't rototill. Mm -hmm. We feed our plants in the fall so that there's decay during the winter months and they can feed the plants. Um, I'm telling people they need to be reusing their soils unless they know they have a problem because those soils contain the exudates and the bacteria and the fungi that have been attracted by the previous plants. So we don't throw mm -hmm. soils away. Um, you know, there's just a, we, we, we don't sterilize our seeds because the seeds contain the bacteria that jump mm -hmm. off the seed into the soil. When mm -hmm. the seed germinates, they get trapped in the plant as the flower forms and the seed uh, forms inside the plant. Those bacteria that go into the plant get trapped in that seed and are carried from generation to generation to generation. And certain plants require certain kind of bacteria that only that plant carries the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you want to make sure that you're treating your soil and your seeds in a way that fosters the microbial environment. Mm, I love this. It's making me think of so many analogies with the human body in terms of, you know, a lot of people, they're trying to get healthy. They're trying to get healthy and they're just like working so hard, like the sweaty gardener, like this has to be hard. And it's like, actually, if your body has everything it needs, it has the right beneficial gut bacteria. You have the nutrients you need. It can like, it can be a lot easier, but it's about providing that environment, making sure, you know, it's being nourished and it, it's just it's so, so similar with plants and it, it can be easier well, when you have the right resources for it's your even more, it's your even, even more similar than you know mm -hmm. uh, what happens in the in the in the rhizophagy cycle in this teeming with bacteria as, as it's described and by the way you know again i didn't invent any of this stuff i'm just the reporter of this stuff mm -hmm. and i have a because i'm an attorney by trade i have the ability to be able to take a complicated subject and mm -hmm. dumb it down so that I can understand it. Yeah. And if I can understand it as a lawyer, then, you know, you as a, mm -hmm. any other profession can certainly understand it much mm -hmm. better than I can. Uh, and, and it really is that simple. The, 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 this system ha has been proven. Uh, it was introduced to the Garden Writers of America in about 1999, 2000. Uh, at that time, not one garden writer who were out of 950 who were asked to raise their hand if they knew what a mycorrhizal fungi was, did so. They didn't know mm -hmm. what they were. Today, mm -hmm. everybody knows what a mycorrhizal fungi is in the gardening world. We don't write about chemical fertilizers anymore. The only people who do that are the in-house writers for various uh, uh, chemical companies. And so um, it's, it's really a big change that has taken place and an even bigger change in the future because these bacteria uh, are becoming available in certain forms for gardeners. They're being used by farmers already. 
And the big chemical companies that we all have learned to hate because they're selling glyphosate and doing mm -hmm. all sorts of terrible things are all looking at endophytic bacteria because mm -hmm. that's the future. To get a plant to fix nitrogen inside the plant instead of having to apply it outside the plant and ruin the soil. So we're getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think, I, I hope that, that podcasts like this are going to really help spread the word. Rhizophagy mm -hmm. is the word. Uh, the soil food web has now been expanded. We now uh, have a different view of how it operates. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful lesson for people to take. Now, these bacteria are attracted by the root, by the plant. The plant produces a, something called butyric acid, uh, uh, which is sort of like butter. It's a, it's a, a butter smell. If you get too much butyric acid, it begins to smell like vomit, I have to tell you. <laughs> uh, but the plant attracts these bacteria uh, to, to move through the cell wall as a result of uh, this butyric acid. The same exact thing happens in your intestines. Mm -hmm. The bacteria are induced to move in through the intestine cell wall by butyric acid. It's the same exact system. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful. So there's a lot of synergies yeah. between these guys. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it is a beautiful system. Yeah, okay. thank you for sharing that. And I have to ask you also, because you do have a book on uh, DIY auto flowering cannabis. Now, I right. am a huge advocate of uh, plant medicines for healing and growth. And also there's many, we it's well established, there's many medicinal benefits of cannabis. I am actually, I, I consider it one of the plant medicines, much, much like sure. psychedelic mushrooms and all of these. And so um, I, I was wondering if you could speak about cannabis and what you've yeah. learned about growing yeah. cannabis or, you know, the benefits or wh wherever you'd like to take sure, it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that particular book's not part of the uh, teaming T E A M yes. series. Uh, yes. It's called DIY auto flowering cannabis. Auto mm -hmm. flower cannabis is, the, is a third kind of cannabis. You have indica sativa, and then you have this auto flower. Now the indica. Really? Sativa, I didn't yeah, know that. In, yeah. Indica and sativa require a, a shortening day to set flowers. And so it can take it can take six months to get them to grow, and and then you get the change. In, uh, auto flower cannabis doesn't care about the day length; it is mm. genetically designed to flower after a set period of time. And it turns out to be seventy to maybe ninety days. So you can grow cannabis in three months outdoors, indoors, mm. and you can do under 24 hour light if you wanted to because it has nothing to do with the length of light so many 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 of the of the dispensaries that are popping up around the country have converted from auto from uh, D, uh indica and sativa to auto flowers they're really a phenomenal thing to grow and if you can get your hands mm -hmm. on seeds they are so easy to grow but to tie mm -hmm. it in with with the with the uh, book uh, teeming with bacteria mm -hmm. the seed contains the bacteria that that cannabis needs in order to be that strain of cannabis which is wow. really simple incredible um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, Alcapoco Gold has a different set of bacteria than Durban Poison. So you're saying uh, that what, the bacteria is what determines the strain? Gives it that terroir. Uh, and it wow. gets even more interesting because what Dr. White and his students have discovered is the trichomes on tomatoes, on any plant, those trichomes. It, I, I think I made it clear, I hope I made it clear that you don't get root hairs if you don't have these bacteria. Well, mm -hmm. it turns out these bacteria also are in the trichomes. Now, when I wrote the book, the research hadn't been completed, and there was a question of whether these trichomes act just like hairs, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't. But they do contain bacteria and endophytic bacteria, and these endophytic bacteria are fixing nitrogen in those trichomes. In order to fix nitrogen, you have to have a uh, oxygen-free environment. In order to get that oxygen-free environment, the plant trichome surrounds the plant with cannabinoids and flavonoids. And they're different depending on what you have in terms mm -hmm. of your seed. So, so you're getting 
nitrogen fixation in those trichomes, but you're also getting the flavor, the essence of your cannabis being produced as a result of the nitrogen fixation. It's wow. fascinating that stuff. That is fascinating More and stuff. more study, more and more study on it uh, is, is popping up. And then mm -hmm. we go one step further. The soil that you use contains some bacteria in it as well. And it turns out that vermicompost made by worms, putting the, the material through their bodies, versus thermocompost made by the microbes heating up the soil, contain a different mix. And some plants grow better in one mix mm. versus the other. And so we're beginning to do the research. If you're growing plants, put three or four of them in, in a, uh, uh, a thermal compost and three or four of them in a, uh, a vermi compost and see which ones do better. Uh, mm. it's, it's fascinating. Because unlike the mycorrhizal fungi, which sleep around, you know, one fungi can feed different kinds of plants the bacteria tend to be a little bit more specific and you got to make sure that you've got the right bacteria for the right plant. So all this research is being done now and Very cool. we're going to get more and more of this stuff as time moves forward. Yeah, I, see it, I see it revived a revised edition somewhere in my future. Yeah, years. yeah, because you wrote that in 2019, correct? It came out in 2019. So I was like, that's pretty, or is that correct? Yeah. Well, I, I started in yeah, I started in 2019. It just came out two uh, uh, two months ago. The cannabis two one? Oh no, the cannabis book I wrote. Oh. I wrote. Yeah, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. I see. We're, we're yeah. transitioning over. Yeah, and I have right. to say, I'm looking at your books on Amazon, and you've got incredibly high ratings. We're talking, you know, pretty much five star ratings on all of them, with like 1,700 yeah. reviews, 900 reviews. Like, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's funny. I, I, and they're and they're translated into foreign languages, which is even whoa, whoever expected that. You know? <laughs> uh, so teaming with microbes, I think it's in 10 different languages. Uh, to, you know, wow. It's just amazing. Yeah, man, amazing. So did you, was this like a hobby for you that you decided to just like really pursue or like, how did you get into this coming from yeah. being an attorney? You know, how'd that happen? Well, I, I, you know, it's long story to make it really short. My father was a big time gardener, but so was my grandfather. And if you wanted to spend time with either of them, you had to do it out in the garden. Well, they didn't know anything about this stuff. Uh, and when I moved to Alaska, uh, we had one newspaper, two newspapers, and one publisher, and it wasn't treating one of the newspapers very well. The news we got on TV was a day late, et cetera. So we needed two newspapers, and I helped the second newspaper survive, and the oh, editor wow. asked me what else I could do for her, and I said, I can write a garden column. So I started oh, writing a garden wow. column, for, very conventional garden column. Uh, yeah. I, my family has had a long relationship with miracle Grow. Uh, mm -hmm. As a result of the owner of Miracle Grow working for my parent, my father, and my grandfather in the butter business, advertising, oh, and he wow. hated it. He hated it. He couldn't <laughs> stand it. All his friends are doing Gillette Blue Blades and fun stuff, and so he spent his weekends driving <laughs> around. and He he met a gentleman who had a fertilizer uh, in New Jersey, and he said, "Let's go into business together." And he put an ad in the newspaper. Long story short, he made twenty five thousand bucks or twenty thousand bucks that first week in cash, which was more than he was getting paid by the butter company. And so he told my father, "I quit. I love you guys. I hate this business." He started Miracle Grow. Well, wow. uh, uh, Miracle Grow, uh, you know, it's a wonderful product. It works, but it doesn't work using the microbes. Right, uh, and and so. Uh, it's, it's an interesting juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. He put my picture on a margarine package, which really messed up my life. Uh, and so now I'm allowed to bad mouth miracle grow a little bit <laughs> uh, you know, when, when that Scott guy comes in and yells at you every spring to put this stuff down on your lawn. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. You go organic, go natural. Yeah. Although miracle grow is the largest purveyor of organics in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you can do your own using mulches. Uh, and and uh, feed your plants. Just just find compost is is probably the best stuff you can use, uh, mm. and it's 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 really a terrific way to go. So it's the mm. only way to go, as far as I'm concerned. Much to the chagrin of the people who run Miracle Grow. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that story. I love hearing some backstories. I appreciate that. And I'm also wondering, you know, in terms of, so let's say we've got like, somebody's like, you know what, this is cool. I want to, I want to be a gardener. I want to do it this way. I want to have it right. So you would recommend 
starting in compost, right? We, my right. mom was kind of like OG. We had a big, huge compost thing. You know, we yeah, always sure. had a garden and compost yeah. and all that. So compost, um, right. and then, and any other tips in terms of increasing soil health naturally? Yeah. Mulches. Garden. There is no such thing as a bare soil in nature. There's always something on the soil. Yeah. And so we come along and hire people to blow our leaves away. Uh, we mm-hmm. like to have a clean garden. No, mulch that garden. And the mm. thing that works best uh, are green mulches for annuals, um, brown mulches for things that are in the ground for more than a year. If you grind up leaves, you turn it into a, 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 an ability for the bacteria to get and break it up. So it sort of acts as a green mulch. So ground up leaves and compost make terrific mulches. Your garden should always have a mulch on it. No plant should grow through bare soil. And those mulches will feed the soil continually. You don't need to rototill them in. Those bacteria and fungi and uh, nematodes and protozoa all move down into the soil. Uh, it, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful system. Mm-hmm. And it's the same one that's been operating mm-hmm. on those wonderful mm-hmm. redwoods. You know, you're reminding me so much. I was, um, I was actually at a regenerative farm in Ohio in August and I, they were so kind and welcoming and they were like, you can explore. And, you know, it was woods and beautiful and by the Huron river. And I just was out there kind of exploring out (laughs) and it was so fascinating because here I am interviewing for this regenerative farm and they're doing it right. It's beautiful how they're doing it, but you know, I'm off of the farm and I'm just in nature. It's just uninhibited wild nature. And I, it's August, those leaves are just barely starting to fall. And I just see this leaf just fall right in front of me, hit the ground. And there's all this gunk, right? There's just old leaves and sticks and all this stuff. And and it, of course it was green, just everywhere, just vines and trees and plants. And, you know, it was just like, this is it. This, 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 if you, this is just let it do its thing, let things right. grow. They feed itself. It, it was just mulch. You know, if you go out yeah. of nature, there's mulch everywhere. That's, that's how it exactly works. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you see today there, the, the uh, you know, I always write my stuff a little earlier than the lower 48 because our season ends, you know, and I, I, I wrote a column again this year saying, leave your leaves on the ground. Don't pick your leaves up they're good yeah. for your lawn they won't smother your lawn they'll decay over the winter and they'll feed your lawn Love it. and 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 i got you know a number of my readers wrote and said well you know we don't think so you're you, we <laughs> believe you on everything but not on this one and and i i had to had to really take some to task say no i am right on this i know i'm right on this mm-hmm. you guys are wrong on this and the next thing you know every single article you read about leaves this fall was leave them because that's what you're supposed to do that's the science we're beginning to take gardening out of the realm of mythology into science yeah it's like why do we think the leaves fall Hmm. you know and in terms of the cycle and it's i i'm sure you're hitting up against you know i think of i grew up in virginia so there are so many leaves and it's probably people's social like i can't it's a socially unacceptable you know but if we change that as you you know kind of let out on maybe we can see a change yeah and we and and we have in alaska i can tell you that i mean alaska is very organic and and people have understood now that the leaves help what i tell people is if if you've got an aesthetic problem with those leaves on the ground run them over with a mulching mower and put a pattern down so make mm. circles in your lawn go, <laughs> go, go di- diagonal to the front door make it look pretty uh even yeah. though you left the leaves there yeah. in the springtime they'll that. all be gone yeah it's yeah beautiful it, more, and more decay in the winter months in that little area, even if it snows, there's a, a little area between the ground and, and the snow where you get microbial activity like no one's business. And people just are not aware of that. You think, ah, it's cold right. and the microbes can't be working. No, they don't care. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're eating and they're multiplying and they're breeding. And that's what they're supposed to be doing. So mm. really works yeah. out great. And, I'm- and Yeah, I'm sorry. And when you when you tie this stuff all together, you end up with a better garden, better mm-hmm. food, uh, and, and you end up healthier as well because when your soil is healthy, it contains 
It contains uh, bacteria that make you healthy. Uh, there's a mycobacteria that when you go out and the reason why people like the garden and maybe the reason why they like to over garden, uh, in other words, do more work in the garden mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is because when you put your hands in that soil, you're giving yourself yeah. this mycobacterium that causes a slight elevation of your mood. When you walk around in the woods, the forest bathing, as the Japanese call it, yeah. you're getting these mycobacteria in your system and they're doing great things for you. So uh, all of this stuff ties together to your health, soil health. They are tied together. Beautiful. It's so funny. I had another interview right before this. She'll be the episode before yours. We were just talking about organic beauty care, like using oils and organic things. And we got all into this forest bathing bacteria, putting, getting the dirt all on your skin. Like sure. that's what me yeah. and my kids do. And purposely I'm like, give me all that fungi and all these microbes right, right. and right. enhance my immune health and my mood and all of it. So I exactly. love that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. It's that we are our bodies, at least, you know, whatever you believe spiritually in terms of consciousness or soul or whatever, our bodies are from this earth. Our bodies are part of this earth. They work together. Right. So anything that increases the health of the soil or the planet is the same for us and vice versa, you know? So, right. um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. It's teeming with bacteria is the new book. You can get it on Amazon. I'll link your website. Um, and there, don't forget there's teeming with, do you have a website? Uh, you know, I do, but I'm, I'm an old Okay, we'll just do Amazon. <laughs> Amazon? Is that the yeah, best place to get Amazon, it? they have them all. Uh, and okay. I would uh, the order I would put them in, I would start with teaming with microbes. Okay. Because that's the Dr. Elaine Ingham original version of the Soil Food Web. And then I would add teaming okay. with bacteria because that's the addition to what Dr. Elaine discovered. That's Dr. White's stuff. And then I would read teaming with fungi. Uh, because mm -hmm. fungi act like these bacteria in forming a symbiotic relationship. And then the last book I wrote was Teeming with Nutrients. And I wrote that book because I want, I, okay, so I know where the nutrients are coming from, but how do they get into the plant? And what do they do once they're Beautiful. inside the plant? And it is fascinating. Is it really fascinating how they put... The everything that you see on a plant is produced by that plant. That's incredible when you think about it. That little seed turns into a redwood. Uh, everything in that redwood, on that redwood, was produced by an internal cell system in the redwood. Whoa! It's really mind-boggling. And mm. and once once you read it and get the understanding, you know you'll never look at plants again. Uh, they are mm. not these things that are stuck in the ground uh, that are dumb in the inanimate objects. Mm. They are because they are stuck in the ground and can't move. They've developed systems to feed themselves, to keep themselves mm. healthy, et cetera, et cetera. And their health, as you said, is directly related to our health. Mm, it's got to be such a, a paradigm shifting book because it's just so rare to see a book with this many reviews. You know, currently, Teaming with Nutrients has 888 reviews on Amazon. Wow. It's like all five stars are orange, you know? So it's like, yeah. okay, yeah. that must have been very impacting for people. I'm definitely going to check that out. I'm, I'm excited good. to see what you good, good, good. dug up there. Super. So, Jeff, Super. thank you. Thank you so much for doing this work. And thank you for coming on the My show pleasure. and sharing with us today. Sure. Let's do it again sometime. My all pleasure. right. Sounds great. All right. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you.